I'm, I'm pushing it because I think that's such a noble thing you do, taking the children to Egypt every year. Um, is that were you inspired at all by Dr. Penn, Dr. Ben? You know, also Egyptologist who of took course. right and talk about why it's important to take children to Egypt every year. Well, for one, we do it through the African Genesis Institute, and the goal that we have set aside for ourselves is to make sure that our children know their have their African heritage and who mm -hmm. they are, and to try to get back to the source, uh, who we are as Camites, people mm -hmm. who uh, were the first and people who were of a civilization that actually understood the order and the balance of the universe. And we try to talk to our students in a way that they understand that they were kings and queens, but they are also balanced individuals who need to be able to use that balance within the current day society and to not just think it's something that you read in a book. Mm -hmm. You know, we have too many illnesses that are out here right now, not just physical illnesses, but mental illnesses that I think can be uh, altered by just your way of thinking, your way of life, who you are. Okay. And when we take these students on these trips, we teach them who they are. We teach them who the kings and queens are. And even just the everyday lives of people who lived in ancient Kemet and how it relates to that. We're going to talk about that, mental illness and spirituality. But first, I mm -hmm. wanted to ask you, Shauna, um, you have media and ministry. Okay, I do. that's something really new for me. So is that something, to me, I'm thinking of. Uh, a minister, a reverend, a preacher without a pulpit is right now is the internet, television, and radio. So this is that's what you do. Absolutely. So Healing Truth Center would be the ministry that mm -hmm. I have, and it's a multimedia ministry. So mm -hmm. I do an online radio show. Mm -hmm. I also do videos, and so that's one of the, the two ways that I engage with individuals is through online media. One thing I wanted to ask you was I checked out one of your videos, and one of your messages was. Um, that you are not here to tell you what God to pray for. You're here to assist that person in choosing their God. Am, am I right in saying that? Could you explain Absolutely that? Absolutely, sure. Mm -hmm. um, and as I'm hearing you ask the question back, I realize how that's fairly uncommon. Okay. But yes. um, my understanding in ministry is less about telling people exactly what I believe and what I understand God to be, but mm. instead in the tradition of spiritual education. Mm. And to educate is to bring out from within. Mm. So for me to tell someone this is exactly how life is, when I'm also a student of life, a student of God, mm -hmm. I feel is not necessarily my place. I can share resources, I can share ideas, mm -hmm. and encourage individuals to think and get really clear mm -hmm. about who and what God is to them. I mean, in a, in a world, I'm sorry, love, but just in a, in a world where there's so many different religions and so many different perspectives and cultures, I would be surprised if there was only one way to God, mm -hmm. but probably many ways. Mm -hmm. What's really interesting about you is that you weren't raised in the church. Not at all. That's, that's kind of interesting to me because when I think of a minister, you know, um, I'm thinking of someone who was in church like three years old, two years old, five years old, and people go, that child is going to be a minister. They're going to grow up and do this and that. You didn't even attend church regularly. So how does someone that didn't go to church become a reverend? I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's honestly, it's been such a very interesting and also wonderful path for me. Um, I, I'll, I'll share this parts of the story because it is a, a fairly long one because okay. I've been here for a while. <laughs> but the short, the short version though is that uh, my mom is here. My mom was always very open. My, my family's from the Caribbean and when they came to the States and I was born, the idea was that she didn't want me to necessarily grow up in any one particular church. She wanted me to have the opportunity to explore and understand for myself. And she wasn't familiar with the church system in the States and things like that. And so I really had the freedom to explore mm -hmm. with my different friends and family members and there wasn't any regimented um, ideology and the, the blessing is is that you know over time and I shared this story with you there were there were times that I could not help but feel the presence and power of God mm -hmm. as a kid and as an adult and it was just very clear to me that I had more to do with what I felt and what I would hear in my quiet time. And I always felt like I was the odd one in the family. I had to go to church kicking and screaming. I didn't mm. feel like it was a place for me. I didn't understand why at the time. Because y'all were the chosen ones. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, my mom used to get so frustrated with me because she's like, I have to save your soul. You have to do this. You have to do oh, this. Really? So, um, you know, I remember asking my mom, well, what color is God? And, you know, who is he really? And why is he only a man? And 
You know, wow. she was like, you don't ask those questions. You just go to church and you go by faith. And I said, okay, I don't get it. So um, throughout my life, at one point, I felt that I was agnostic. I kept saying, mm -hmm. well, I don't believe in anything in particular. I know something's there. I think I'm just spiritual. I don't have a real name for it. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess moving through uh, high school and college, I started reading more. I found the love for reading mythology. I started off with Greek mythology, and then I realized it had come from something else. Hmm. And um, I started studying ancient Egyptian uh, metu the ancient mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. Started yeah. reading some of the myths of ancient Egyptian culture, and I said, you know, I'm starting to see something. I'm starting to click here, and it started to make sense. And then I didn't realize that you can actually live this legacy. I started meeting people. It's almost like people started to come towards me at the time when I was most open, and I started questioning and being more curious, and I started learning about different societies that live this mm -hmm. culture every day. Okay. Um, when I was at your Ankh ceremony, mm -hmm. the priest said something about how will you, as a priestess, mm -hmm. um, dispel the myth of your religion or the way of mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. um, they are devil worshipers. <laughs> um, they idol, they pagans, they idol, um, statues, mm -hmm. animals, and all that. I mean, is, <laughs> is that true? I mean, because what yeah. I'm, I'm understanding is Kemet is old Christianity. Kemet, uh, Christianity has its roots in, in uh, ancient Kemet, I should say, Kemetic society. Mm -hmm. uh, no, we are not devil worshipers. We don't worship many idols. Uh, we're not polytheistic. There's a misconception because people have looked at images and taken those images and run with them and say, oh, well, they're worshiping these images. Whereas in most spiritual understandings, mm -hmm. most faiths, there are images that you look at that give you a sense of uh, your understanding of the world. They're metaphoric. You know, mm -hmm. They're not something that you worship. I don't believe that there's a man walking around with a bird head, but I do understand Heru and Heru's place in my soul. Okay. I understand that Heru is a symbol and it's mm -hmm. something that it's supposed to define an understanding for mm -hmm. me. And that's mm -hmm. what the comedic understanding is. You, you have symbols that try to relate to different parts of nature, to different parts of society. Okay. You know, I believe that the creator is both man and woman. Mm -hmm. I believe that the creator has many faculties. And mm -hmm. uh, people who are not familiar with the comedic understanding will say that those faculties are individual gods when they're just faculties of one being. Well, she did. Mm -hmm. This is a video that she, uh, um, a conference that she did at the NAACP. Mm. So the NAACP, you would think, would be aware of it in its entirety and not jump to conclusions. Mm. But they called it shameful, just like everyone else. And this just goes to show what I say all the time about the manipulation of the media mm -hmm. and how it just, um, I mean, it should have been questioned just from the person that released mm -hmm. the video. This guy has a very questionable past. Mm -hmm. This guy is the same person that went after Acorn mm -hmm. and caused them to lose their funding. Mm -hmm. The question yes. I want to ask everybody on this panel is, Okay, we made a mistake. You can have your job back. <laughs> would you take it? I, you know, right now, because of the economy, I would. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I appreciated her comment, which was that she has to think about yeah, it. I mean, right. she's, she's not, not going to make rush. the exact same mistake that right. they did, right. which was to make a decision without all of the information. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, okay. Right? Because okay. they hadn't taken the time to even investigate where was this coming from, what the full breadth of the video, and to do an investigation. They were like, you got to go, you got to go. Where's the car? Where are you? You right, have to go. Right, right. So. Um, I think the same mistake is, is potentially there if mm -hmm. you just take a job back. Like, oh, okay, we're sorry. No, let's figure out what happened, what went mm -hmm. wrong, okay. and what is this organization going to do differently mm -hmm. in order to meet my needs as an employee and meet my concerns. I wouldn't have even resigned to begin with. I probably would have seeked legal counsel mm -hmm. and fought it. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, I would have realized I didn't do anything wrong. And just because they misunderstood something or they didn't pay the full clip, I have every right to fight for my job and to prove who I am. I mean, at this point... Let's just assume for, this, for the record that what was on that video was actually accurate. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with redemption? If this is something that happened over 20 years ago. Robert C. Byrd, remember the longest running senator mm -hmm. that just died recently, I believe mm -hmm. at the age of 92? Mm -hmm. This man was a former member of the Ku Klux Klan. Rather, I should die a thousand times and see old glory trampled in the dirt, never to rise again, than to see this beloved land of ours become degraded by the race mongrels, a throwback to the blackest specimen from mm. the wilds. This is a quote from this man. He said, and he also wanted to bring back the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> this man talked about redemption later in his life. And remember, when he died, he was praised you know, as a man who changed. So I'm saying, where is the fairness here, even if it was what it appeared to be? Because even General um, McChrystal, 
when he did what he did to President Obama.